In the next few segments, our focus is on looking at ways to synthesize alcohols as our reaction products. In our first unit, an introduction to this, we're going to look at synthesizing alcohols from alkenes. This is a review of segments numbers 65 through 67. So if you want a comprehensive overview of these reactions, go back and review those videos. This is just going to be a general overview or reminder of these techniques that we have learned in the past. So let's go ahead and look at the ways to synthesize alcohols from alkene starting materials. We learned, we learned three different ways to go about doing this. So our three approaches for converting alkenes into alcohol products that we've talked about previously are one, acid catalyzed hydration, two, oxymercuration reduction, and three, the reaction we call hydroboration oxidation of an alkene. First off, to give a reminder and overview of the acid catalyzed hydration, acid catalyzed hydration was the reaction where the first step was protonation of the alkene using an acid, and that's going to lead us to a Markovnikov type addition of H and OH across the carbon-carbon double bond and carbocation rearrangements being possible. So with this particular reaction, it's always a good idea to map out the first step of the mechanism at least in order to determine whether you expect there to be a carbocation rearrangement leading to the final product. So let's illustrate what I'm talking about here. So for acid catalyzed hydration, we'll go ahead and start with 3,3-dimethyl-1-butene, the molecule shown here. We react with acid, which is typically sulfuric acid. I'm just going to put H plus there as an abbreviated way of showing that, and water. What will happen in the first step anytime we have an acid catalyst is that we're going to take either lone pair electrons or a pi bond from our organic reactant and protonate. So here we just have a pi bond present, no lone pairs available. So we bring that pi bond over and pick up a proton. Let's go ahead and draw out the intermediate that results from that. So the intermediate resulting from that, we want to make the most stable carbocation possible, which is going to correspond to putting the new proton here at the end to take that CH2 group that was the end and make it a CH3 group, therefore putting the positive formal charge right here. That gives us a secondary carbocation instead of the primary carbocation that would result if we were to place the proton here at carbon number two and put the carbocation at carbon number one. So now at this point, we've made a carbocation that is not a tertiary carbocation, it's a secondary carbocation. So what we want to do then is our carbocation rearrangement in order to further stabilize this. This is going to be a very energetically favorable step because it's going to take a secondary carbocation and convert it into a tertiary carbocation. In order to accomplish that, we'll take either a hydride group, that is H with its lone pair of electrons associated with it, or the lone pair of electrons coming from the covalent bond, or a methyl group and do a 1-2 shift, moving from the adjacent carbon right here, one of the three groups that's bonded it, over to the carbocation. And here we just have at the carbon in blue three methyl groups bonded, so that's all we have available to move is one of those three methyl groups. So the methyl group, one of those comes over, and if this is productive, it's going to take us from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. If it doesn't accomplish that, then what that will mean is that we have done something wrong along the way or that it's a step that's not going to happen because it won't be energetically favorable. So initially our carbocation here would have been a CH group. So our CH group now has picked up that methyl group that we just moved over with our blue electron pushing arrow. So we show a methyl bonded there and now that green carbon has the octet. And now it is this carbon right here that will be deficient, a methyl group, and therefore, since it only has three bonds left, it is going to be a carbocation. So this is the carbocation that we will work with, our tertiary carbocation, to lead to the final product. I'm going to skip the next couple of steps in the mechanism where the water attacks the carbocation and then gets deprotonated to lead us just to our final product of this reaction. So the final product is going to correspond to plugging our hydroxy group to make our final alcohol right here. So that is your final product. Keep in mind the key features of acid catalyzed hydration is that you're going to get a Marx rule addition reaction of H and OH across the carbon-carbon double bond and you do have to be on the lookout always for carbocation rearrangements due to the way that this mechanism works. The next reaction that we learned about to convert alkenes into alcohols was oxymercuration reduction and we're going to start with the same 
starting material that we did for the acid catalyzed hydration here and show how oxymercuration reduction will allow us to do a Markov to Kopf type addition without carbocation rearrangement. So in this reaction we took and we had present water as well as our oxymercuration reagent which was mercury bonded to two O acetyl groups. So in the mechanism for this reaction at the first step what happens is that our pi electrons come over and those form a bond to the mercury metal because that's an electron deficient atom due to the fact that there's electron withdrawing oxygen atoms bonded here and here and one of those two oxygen atoms breaks away like so and that will give us our intermediates that is then going to be stabilized by resonance and this resonance is going to be the cause of why when we are dealing with oxymercuration reduction we don't have carbocation rearrangements taking place so let's go ahead and draw that intermediate out corresponding to having a new bond formed between mercury and our carbon atom of the what was originally the alkene so we go like this and this would put a positive formal charge right here but then by resonance we can show that we can take the lone pair of electrons from the mercury bring that down to create a three membered ring bridge within the molecule and remember that any time that you can use resonance as a reason to stabilize your molecule then the carbocation rearrangements are not going to occur in those cases because resonance is a stronger stabilizing factor and doing a carbocation rearrangement is not going to not going to improve that resonance so leave it at that so we've got our intermediate that is resonance stabilized here what happens from there then is that the water that's present in the reaction mixture acts as a nucleophile to attack an electrophilic carbon atom from that three-membered ring. So attacking the electrophilic carbon atom from the three-membered ring is going to have the attack going on right here because if we look at our two resonance structures, one of those two resonance structures has a positive formal charge there, so that means that's the more electron, electron positive, electropositive atom, electrophilic atom there. As a result of that attack of our nucleophile on the electrophilic carbon, the carbon mercury bond has to break right there and that's going to take us to our key intermediates here we'll have OH2 here and then up here we would have our mercury bonded to the O acyl group and a lone pair of electrons on that then from here what happens is that that mercury is going to be replaced with a hydrogen atom during the second phase of the reaction which is the reduction step. So the reduction step uses sodium borohydride, a common reducing agent, to break that bond to mercury and replace it with one of the hydrides right here from the sodium borohydride to give us our final product here. A couple of steps down the road that will correspond to having deprotonated the water to give a hydroxy group there and have inserted an extra H here to give CH2's conversion into the CH3 that we see in the final product. So you'll notice here the advantage of this in terms of its regioselectivity is that this allows us to do a Markovnikov type addition without carbocation rearrangement. So I'll go ahead and write that down for you. Now we move on to our third way to convert alkenes into alcohols, which is the hydroboration oxidation reaction. So this is going to be our only way that we can do uh, addition that is opposite Markovnikov's rule. So it's going to give us opposite Mark's addition of H and OH without carbocation rearrangements because there is no carbocation in this mechanism. So no carbocation rearrangement because there simply isn't one occurring within the mechanism for this reaction if we were to look at the mechanism for this. So going opposite Mark's rule without carbocation rearrangement we can decipher what the product would be of this reaction. So we go ahead and take our starting material. Our hydroboration oxidation reagents are first borane BH3 or alternatively B2H6. Secondly for the oxidation step we use peroxide H2O2 and 
sodium hydroxide as a base there. And so what's going to happen in drawing out the final product of this is go opposite Mark's rule, which means the OH is going to add to the less substituted carbon. The H adds to the more substituted carbon. So that means that right here, where we had a CH group to start with, is where we picked up the H to give CH2. And over here at the end, where we had CH2 to start with, is where we're going to pick up that hydroxy group. So this is our only option for doing the formation of an alcohol going opposite Markovnikov's rule. The oxymercuration reduction and acid catalytic hydration both follow Mark's rule. So these are gonna be three ways that we can go about converting alkenes into alcohols that we've already looked at and we're just reviewing here. Now in the next units, we're going to look at new ways to go about synthesizing alcohols as our reaction products.